Hey, it's Tom from WPWithTom.com, and in this video, I'll be covering the Elementor Pro Call to Action widget. So before we dive in, I just wanted to say that if you don't already have Elementor Pro, I highly recommend that you pick it up for yourself. And if you want to do so and support my channel, you can get it at WPWithTom.com slash Elementor. So to get started here, I just uploaded a basic starter site from Astra and I'm going to add a couple different options for call to actions. Now this site actually comes with one right here, but it almost looks kind of funny because she's actually only pointing at the call to action when you're all the way down because of the parallax effect. I know you can easily change that or use a different image, but I'm going to go through how to create two different call to actions on this site. So let's just go to edit with Elementor. And then we'll go to the left side here and get our call to action widget. And now that it's loaded, I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to add a couple new sections. So let's just go and add this one to start. And I'm going to search for call to action over here. And I'll just drag that and drop it in right here. So now we have our call to action widget area. What we can do from here is we can choose different things. So we have classic or cover. I'm actually going to first go right here, right click edit section and I'm going to change the layout so it stretches to be full width and then I'm going to make it full width right here so stretch section full width and then I'm going to do no gap for the columns gap so it rides right up to the top here so now I can actually go right click on here and edit call to action to get back into our call to action editing area so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start with the classic one and then I'll show you how to do the cover one as well so let's just click here and choose an image and I actually uploaded two images already. I got these images from Stencil and you can get them through my link below if you want to get your own account. I create all my images through there and that's wpwithtom.com slash stencil if you want to check that out. But here I'm going to just upload this image for now and then I'm going to go and change the positioning. So right now the image you really can't see it too well and it's positioned above. So we can go and choose it to be to the left if we want over here or you can have it on the right. I'm gonna have it this way when I actually finish this image, so I'm gonna leave it on the right for now. And something I wanted to point out here is you wanna look how it looks on each device. So if we go over down here, we go to responsive mode, you can see what it will look like on a tablet, and you can see the image shows up pretty nicely right there. But if we went to mobile, it's going to be scrunched up against it. Now, this doesn't look that bad because she's centered in this picture, but if it was a little off, this would look very off and it wouldn't really fit right. It might be too squished depending on the size of your image. So I would say on a mobile device, I would recommend just making it above so then you can see it better like this rather than to the right. But I'm going to leave it as above for this and then I'm going to navigate back to desktop and have it on the right for the desktop so it just looks better overall. So if we want to, we can go down here to where it says content and we can change the content. I'm just going to add in some basic text here. I'm going to put summer sale for the title and then I'll just say, be sure to take advantage of our summer savings. And then here we'll do our click here. We'll just say save big or something like that. So here you could add your link that you'd want this to go to about your summer sale. And down here we have the option to add a ribbon. So on this ribbon, I'm just going to make it say save big. And you can see by default, it shows up over here on the right side where this image is. If you want it, you can also have it on the left side over here. I'm going to leave it on the right side where it says save big. And then I'm going to go over into the style section. So within this tab here, we can adjust the height to make this fit a little better. So I'm just going to make it 500 pixels here. And now you can see her full image once you actually have it at 500 pixels. Again, you can also change things like alignment. So right here we have summer sale is in the center. If you want it to be to the left or to the right, you can change that. The way to really change it and adjust it as needed is to change the padding. So let's just say you wanted it to be a little more to the right, but not all the way. You might want it to be like 50 left here and then it would scoot it over a little bit closer or 100 left and that's how you would adjust it as needed within this area either top or bottom or left or right however much you want to adjust it i'm going to just make it zero and leave it centered in this case 
And then if we go down here, we can go to content. And here I'm going to just adjust the text colors. So right here, I'm going to go down here and change the actual color. So right now it says background color. I'm going to leave that as is. But title color here, I'm going to adjust that and make it like a fun blue color, more of a summary color. And then what I'll do from here is I'll actually go down, copy that, and I'll then go over here and I'll paste it for the description as well so we can see that changes. And then for the button color, I'm actually going to make the button color blue. And now that this color is blue right here, I'm going to go down to the button area. And from here, I'm actually probably going to change things. I'll make the background color blue and then I'll make the actual text color white so it pops a little bit there with the button. Now that's how you can easily set that up and change that. Now if we want to go down to the ribbon, we can change the background color there as well. So let's also make it the same blue so we have things just matching up and being consistent throughout our site. Here is where the hover effect is. If you want to change this, you can. I'm going to leave it as is, but I'm probably going to change it on the next one that I go through here. But this is where you would change this hover effect that occurs when you hover over the image area. So let's just click update to make that go into effect. And then let's go and add another one down here. So let's click on this icon to get back here. And we'll just type in call to action. And here we'll drag it and drop it right in here. First thing I'm going to do again is just right click edit section. I'm going to stretch the section, make it full width, and then no gap again for the columns gap area. So if we go here and we right click edit call to action, we're going to change this skin to be cover. So this one will be a little bit different than the one we just created above. And let's go and add an image. So I'll choose an image and I'll get my image that I got from stencil over here and I'll insert it in. Now you can see that the background image is quite different because the text is over top of the image rather than left or right of it. So it gives us a little bit different of an effect here if that's what you want to go for. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to content and here I'll just say start saving today and I'll just write something else in here just whatever it really doesn't matter too much for this example but I want you to be able to see how it looks don't miss out on the items you love and then down here for the button text instead of click here I'm just going to write start saving and from here you can add a link again and add a ribbon I'm going to skip over this right now because I already just showed you how to add a ribbon on the other one it's the same process and if we go over here to style, here we can adjust things. I'm going to make the height 600 just because it fits this image a little bit better. Maybe even 650 would be better. But that's how you would adjust that. Now from here, we can go down and change the alignment as needed. I'm going to leave it aligned center again right here with this. And I'm going to go down to where it says content. The big thing here that I want to make sure is that the text color is white and it should be white already by default so it really doesn't need to be changed and I'm just going to make sure all of them are white rather than a little more transparent which they may be by default here. So I'll just leave that as is. Now this is something that you might need to adjust depending on your image and how your image background is. So see right here when we hover over it it's a little bit better with this grayish color but when it's like this it's a little bit harder to read. So I'm going to get into how to change that and have a little more of an overlay for our background here. So what we can do is close this and go down to button. And from here you can change the button size. You can change the effect when you hover over it if you want. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to make the text color here black. And then I'm actually going to make the button color or the background color of the button white right here. So that gives us a little bit different look. Now, if we go down to hover effects, this is where we can change some of the things as far as an overlay goes. And right here, you see it says background, hover animation. We can change that, but first I'm going to change this overlay. So here, by default, we have this as an overlay, basically no overlay. I'm going to make it a grayish overlay. And then what I'm going to do is change the transparency right here so you can see what it looks like. And it's a little bit easier to read the text when it's like that. Now, if I want to go to hover right here, I can make the hover a little bit better. So when you see that it hovers there, it goes and becomes more transparent and you don't have that gray background overlay there changing this look and appearance. 
So I'm going to go and make that a little bit darker. I'm not going to make it fully black here, but I'm going to make it darker. And now you can see that it looks like this and you can really read the text better once it's like that. So it really depends on what you want to do for the look. You can play with this all day and it really depends on your image and maybe your site colors, things like that. So maybe if you wanted to make it something related to your site color, you might make it like blue or something like that. And then it becomes more of a blue shade when they go over it. So there's lots of things you can do with this. I really think it depends on what you're going for on your site. So here, if we go to hover animation, we can also change that. Let's just make it zoom out and you can see when it's like this, we're zoomed out right now and then we hover over it and it goes in. I think it's a cool effect, but you can play with all this and the transition duration times as well right here. So really, I'm just going to update this and that about wraps it up for what you can do for the basics of these two different Elementor Pro call to action widgets here. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribe for more WordPress tutorials. Thanks for viewing and have a wonderful day.